Melissa. <laughs> Can you hear me? Yeah, okay, great. Oh, you're you're okay. muted. Okay, this is gonna, oh yeah, uh, our room mic isn't working, hold on. Um, we're going to log off and then log back in. Not me, I'll be right here, but the administrative link. Um, so if you get lost, I mean, if it drops you, then just come back in on the link. All right, sounds good. Oh. oh, 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 oh. Okay, they're logging off and trying to log back in. Interestingly, Nick, when you did that, you were you never showed up on that screen as even being in this call. I have a city of Lake Forest Park that's on, which is maybe on Steve's computer. Yeah, so that wasn't even showing in the panelist room. So maybe you were at the um, link of the attendee, not a panelist. Do you have the webinar ID number as well? I do. Um, it is uh for tonight for a panelist it is um but if you're not a panelist then your mic doesn't work right just your speaker oh i see i see Okay. We're getting it figured out, y'all. Recording in progress. Try us now. Can you hear us now? Ah, oh, can you hear us? Whatever we hear, it was right. <laughs> 
Every that time seemed like a much harder than it should have been. Hello. <laughs> oh, boy. Two years in and we're still yeah. struggling. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> now that we have that worked out, um, we'll call this meeting to order. I think I can jump off of here now, so we're not seeing me in two Um There we go. Uh, okay, welcome this, and good evening, everybody. It's good to see you. Sorry I missed you last time. Uh, Lois did a fine job sharing. And uh, for posterity, uh, what, I'm sorry I missed TJ's last meeting, but I started the tradition a few years ago of uh, doing notes uh, for departing uh, commissioners and some baked goods. And so uh, if, if you're interested in continuing that tradition with me, um, I'd love to be able to pick up some notes and share baked goods and sort of celebration of TJ's, you know, the end of his term with us. So if um, you could maybe bring those to the next meeting, um, I'll bring treats to share and then we'll take some treats and I'll drop off the cards to TJ on yep. all of them. When does he leave? Uh, it, uh, his trip got postponed uh, uh, because uh, the station has a big outbreak of COVID and so it's unclear when that room, you know, so he's around. around. He's around. Yeah. yeah. What's his excuse? <laughs> uh, okay. Let's see. I need to get an agenda up here in front of us and um, we've called things to order. Uh, does somebody want to read our land acknowledgement? I'll read it. I haven't read it in a while. Okay, we'd like to acknowledge we're on the traditional land of a rich and diverse group of Native peoples who have called this area home for more than 10,000 years. We honor with gratitude the land itself and the descendants of these Native peoples who are still here today. In doing this, we aim to illuminate the longer history of this land we call home, our relationships to this history, and the heritage of those peoples whose ancestors lived here before the European-American immigration that began in the 1800s. Uh, and then I'd love to take a motion on our agenda. Thank you. Uh, any, anything that you guys want to add or delete or discuss about our agenda? Nope. All those in favor of the agenda as published, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Excellent. All right. That passes. How about meeting minutes? Did everyone have a chance to look those over? Could I get a motion to bring those to the table? Please. And to bring to the table the meeting for October 18th of 2022. Excellent. A second. I'll second. Thank you. Uh, were there any corrections uh, on the meeting minutes? Okay. All those in favor of uh, approving the meeting minutes as published, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Excellent. Those pass. Uh, in terms of our next meeting date, uh, were there going to be any that we needed to, to discuss now? Should do we need to look for a different date, or is everyone available for what is that? Uh, 13th. The 13th. David and Melissa, is so the 13th looking good for you? I'm available. I uh, I may be out of town, but I, I I can't say for sure right at the moment. So we should just go ahead with the date. Okay, and possibly you could still join by Zoom, maybe. Yeah. Okay, excellent. All right, we we'll move forward with the thirteenth. What about citizen comments? Do we have anyone in the in the room? That's my sweetheart. Um, Okay, I don't see his hand up, so I'm thinking he doesn't have anything to say. All right, moving along. Uh, how about Council Member Bodhi? What do you have to share with us today? Uh, the council has been hard at work on the budget, so that's occupied a lot of our time. Um, the council knows about your comprehensive plan work that's starting only by my brief report, so it is still something that seems like it's in the distance to them, but they they are planning to hear from planning commission representatives on the, your sign recommendations and your reasonable use ex exemption um, 
uh, recommendations in the near future, but it could end up getting pushed, honestly, because we don't have that many meetings in, um, in December. It could end up getting pushed into January or early next year, but I, I think it's still uh, top of mind. It's just that budget priorities. The, it's the biennial budget for 23 and 24 with in the face of all the economic uncertainty and inflation that is, you know, kind of uh, kicking our butts. So uh, don't put that out of me. <laughs> so anyway, yes. So this will still be coming forward uh, with some dialogue with the planning commission. So okay. nothing else really to uh, to report because that's been consuming All a lot time. of time. Yeah. Uh, which, oh, well, sound transit remains a topic of active discussion because of their current efforts. And the city did send a letter to um, to the sound transit board complaining about the lack of good uh, communication or lack of sufficient transparency. Sound Transit recently published their 60% design uh, specs, which aren't still very detailed. And uh, uh, they are indicating that they'd be willing to have a community public meeting maybe in February. Uh, so again, not all, all that responsive, but our city staff team will be putting together comments on the 60% design. So we have had a lot of public comment at council meetings, basically saying, why don't we just say no thanks for now, considering the list of all the impacts, the low ridership, the economic cost, the fact that it's only going to create a bus lane on one side of the street, but it's going to affect 80 property owners. Uh, maybe we just, you know, either say no thanks for good or no thanks for the time being. And no thanks to what? to the uh, creation, the widening of the road and the creation of the one-way bus lane from 170th to 145th. That's what, that's what all these impacts are associated with, is creating a dedicated bus lane in both directions. We have northbound, we don't have southbound. So, uh, so it's to, to widen the road basically to create that southbound bus lane, which might improve transit times by literally single digit minutes. So uh, so there's a lot of, uh, a lot of property owners, like it's, it's very compelling. One, one person who lives on the uh, lake side of the street, basically the road widening would take away her driveway. And so the road and the sidewalk would be like right up against her front door. So it's just a, you know, a high impact project. You you probably have heard over 400 trees, many significant, over 500 shrubs and bushes. Some of that is the soundproofing that people use with uh, with 522. So uh, I think the council has been listening, and and uh, at least we don't, haven't taken any official official position. But at the last council meeting where this was discussed, there was a lot of concern about moving ahead with this project. So anyway, I'm thinking about speaking of the South Transit Board meeting this Thursday. And you get, I would be considered a member of the public and I would get two minutes. Uh, so I have to speak really fast. Can, can yeah. you say no? I mean, can, can Lake Forest Park say no? Well, what, what I think could, don't put this in the notes, uh, please. What I think could be done is they could, you know, like the parking garage, they've said, we're going to postpone it to 2044. Well, postpone this part of the project to 2044. I'd be okay with that. They don't have to say no. They can just say, not the right time to spend, I forget what it is, about $30 million on this project and create all this controversy when the need is not compelling right now. So it could be kind of a win-win with a little you know, like diplomatic. Outcome. Would they still be able to bring uh, bus rapid transit on as a, as a pass through and just not yes. have the platforms yes. in our city? Yes, they're doing it anyway. I mean, they're when they come to 145th, there's no dedicated bus lanes either way. So the goal, they're planning to turn onto, you know, 145th to go to the light rail station. So that is already kind of a bottleneck. So I, I think that it won't make that much difference in getting down Bothell Way when you look at their own statistics. Mm -hmm. 
and I think I forget what it is, like two minutes difference. And and we're trying to slow down the speed limit on possible way as a council too. So, you know, it could disappear. Question. Anyway, sorry to spend so much on oh, that. Okay. No, that's it's a big topic. Uh -huh. Uh, Melissa or David, do you have questions of Council Member Bodie? Ira asked my question. <laughs> I, and I'm good, thank you. Okay. Uh, do we, when you're talking with them about that, do we also have any ability to understand the long term uh, intentions with a parking garage? It seems like that parcel now here next to City Hall will be in limbo for 20 years. There's there's no legal hold on it, right? So but they can exercise eminent domain, right? At some at some point, but I think the point is they're not going to spend money on it right now. So nothing. I mean, if there's additional development of the of the mall in the meantime between now and when they would start thinking about the parking garage, they would just have to adapt to whatever. Is that right, Steve? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's no. But is it a disincentive for any anybody who, whether it's Merlot and Geyer or another uh, property owner, to build on that parcel, knowing that Sound Transit may come in in a you know 15 to 20 year horizon and exercise. It could cut the other way too, assuming there is some actual development that's beyond the current professional building site. Uh, it could it could preclude that location for sites of parking garage, so it cuts both ways. Gotcha. And I, I, again, I'm not an expert, but I'm just yeah, speculating. Just, yeah. Do you know? Have anything to add to that, Steve? Well, I I think that Sound Transit, you know, they don't have any. They're not tied to that to a particular site uh, any more than any other site. It just it was the most likely place right. when uh, they were looking around for sites. Um, but if it was redeveloped or, you know, if there was a, a no mixed use building there, mm -hmm. I think they would go elsewhere, like maybe look at some other portion, portion of town center. But they, you know, they look at a few different places. On sure, sure. I was just curious. But 2044 is quite a ways out. If yeah. You think about the fact that, you know, what was, what was 22 years ago going backwards in the past, but a lot of things changed over time. Well, thank you for the report. Last question. Um, do you have a expected sort of uh, time that you'll be finished with the budget and can turn your attention to other things? Uh, we aren't sure if we will uh, vote on the budget and be done this Thursday or whether it will take another meeting. I think we have some tentative meetings scheduled into early December, but we have to have the budget to think how we think we'll do this to uh, assess the you know, property tax levy information. We have to have that to them uh, first week in December, I think. So it's going to be um, soon in the next week to either this week or the next uh, week or so. So we'll know, I'll, we'll know more on Thursday when it, we see whether it looks like there are any outstanding issues that we have to spend more time. Thank you so much. We did have our public hearing um, last week, and uh, we had, you know, two only two comments. Thank you. All right. Uh, moving on to our comprehensive plan update, and uh, my understanding from the last meeting was that uh, we were planning to have you, Steve, uh, walk us through. Would you want to help? maybe articulate the goals of, of this review? Yeah, the, um, the primary goal is to uh, you know, give you some familiarity with you know, what was adopted in 2015 or early 2016, uh, and also point out some areas where we know there needs to be some, up, some update. Um, so uh, I was just gonna um, have it up on the screen just so everybody kind of knows where we're at. Uh, but also, I would encourage you to, to use your paper copy if you've got it uh, to uh, to follow along. Um, and we'll just, you know, I just want to say a couple of things about each element just to give you some some highlights. And then, you know, stop me if you have questions about something in that element. Well, before we move on to the next one, 
Let's see if we can address your questions. Share the screen. So, um, first thing I wanted to talk about was uh, in the, um, the introduction, got, uh, you know, just kind of a background explanation of what you can find in these documents. And then uh, the planning framework, I think, is worth talking about a little bit. Um, because these, each one of these aspects of the, um, the country, let me get that to, to one page. <laughs> that's, that's not really see it at this point. Um, so, so yeah, we now have um, your, uh, you can see what's um, that's the 2040 vision. There's now a 2050 vision from the Puget Sound Regional Council. Uh, so we'll be looking to see, see where we need to update, you know, in terms of being consistent with that. I think a lot of it's going to be related to housing. Uh, you'll see as you go through this document that the legacy plan is uh, mentioned uh, a lot of different places. So nothing has been updated with that um, recently. And in terms of other uh, local plan guidance. You know, we've spent a couple of years on the town center vision and um, design guideline. It's um, 2019 through 2021, and so um, that's that's probably something we need to look at in terms of uh, especially policies in the, in the land use element. Do they, do they still reflect what um, the council's policy is? There's a, there's a vision document from this design guideline as well as some code changes that um, may result in uh, some changes that need to be made. And the town center update was part of something that was referred to as the big five uh, over those, last, those two or three years. Uh, the second would be in the, the post plan, um, parks, recreation, um, and open space and trails. Uh, and so that was, um, there's probably a lot in, in the parks element that needs to be updated as far as that's concerned. And then there was a safe streets document and a safe highways document. So those are both kind of capital uh, improvement plans where you have sort of a wish list of projects that you want to do to improve um, safety on the city streets and related to the, um, you know, where they connect with um, the, uh, the major routes 104 and 522. Uh, and so the, when we get into the transportation element, that's probably an area where uh, you would see some, the need to update some there. Um, and then the fifth thing was um, Healthy Creeks, which is sort of an ongoing process of, of uh, refurbishing the, the, um, the culverts. The, the big one was right here at Town Center, and, and they're kind of working their way upstream. Um, most recently, of course, is along with the mural. Right? Uh, so, so those things are happening. So maybe you know, we can check things off and say, accomplished. Can, can I, I ask a couple of questions about this? So this has to do with the the what's on page eight and nine, right? Basically the things that are informing it. Um, on that healthy creeks, uh, is that a like a public, is there a, a public document that prioritizes that or describes which ones, or is that part of another document? I was um, looking for the healthy creek. I, I've actually never seen a document. I think it's more prioritizes to describe you know, it. The, you know, the, the city uh, engineer, the, the public works department. Okay. We're just, you know, moving through is this set of they're moving upstream and, and, and so each one is just a capital uh, facilities uh, project okay. but I, I'll let you know if I find one yeah that I think there some kind of priority yeah, yeah. document probably not a big document but there should be something so okay. but it wasn't on that big five site so I'm not sure where it is could, could I encourage you all to take a look at the legacy hundred year vision because I was surprised in looking at it 
Uh, what good foresight it has, and it has a lot of vision and goals that it can value for LFP that remain, you know, pretty active and pretty pretty much guiding the direction for our city. So I was I was very impressed the first time I picked it up how how what good foresight it has. You know, they, using terms like green infrastructure, you know. Well, that's what I was trying to think of, of the one, two, three, four, five items that are here that kind of inform that, you know, it sounds like Vision 2040 will be replaced by Vision 2050. The legacy 100 year vision would stay consistent. I don't know if, if, if Steve, it sounded like you were saying maybe that Southern Gateway sub area plan is maybe relevant, but certainly including the town center. Or well, the Southern Gateway uh, plan was already adopted when this COP plan was done. Uh, so I, I think it reflects that. And you'll see that the, the districts right. are in there. Okay. Um, but but yeah, the town center plan is not represented. And then the critical areas plan, I mean, that's an ordinance, but is that something that is was in place when this was originally created or does that have a role there, in this? There was an update afterwards. I don't think it really, um, I think the, the plan is more general than the ordinance in that case. Okay. There's not like a, a policy direction change. There are fairly incremental changes the last time it was updated in 2017. Um, you know, you, usually the way it works is you, you update a plan and then you update your regulations to be consistent with the plan. The plan's more of the, the guiding document. Uh, but there are some cases where, you know, you, you make a significant enough change in your regulations that you need to go back and, and look at you know, your plan to make sure it's still consistent. So I just think you'll find you know, the, the policies related to town center are really they're kind of nebulous. And so we know a lot more about what um, the council was looking for when they adopted the, those design guidelines and regulations, as well as this, this vision document. It's not, um, you know, it, it's fairly general, but, but it, it also may have, um, have some policy language uh, that you might find would be helpful in, Bringing the cop plan up to date. And then what about our city's work to come up with a climate action plan for King County's work in that area? Should that be something that informs this as well? Yeah, definitely. That's um, I guess what what I'm um, my focus on this uh, discussion really was like, what do we know that's been done that needs to, to be incorporated? Okay. Then there are the overriding, overarching issues. We talked about last time, which is climate uh, climate action plan, which the, we're going to rely on the committee to come up with, and then um, you know I'm sure there'll be some back and forth on that. And then of course um, housing affordability, that's going to be the other big one, you know, and how it relates to equity as well. So um, so those are sort of things I, I you know I can't tell you how exactly the plan is going to change at this point because the right. state and counties are still working out sort of the methodology. For how we address affordability, um, and of course we're waiting for the uh, climate action committee to solidify whatever it wants to recommend for the city. But these are things that just have happened since um, right. the uh, this plan was adopted. Uh, and, and so this is you know it, it, this is really long for the vision statement. It's you know it's, it, you have to remember the committee to work <laughs> um, and a commission. And um, and it was really intent on sort of uh, using the, the public input it got to to write this vision. So um, I'm not going to read through the whole thing, but you know, if you do read through it, you know, and just kind of um, you know uh, give it some time, each sentence to think about, you know, is that still where we're at? And you know, it, and it really it's just an individual reaction initially. But as you, as we get into more um, discussion with, uh, you know, public events, and then you start to have, you know, more of a basis to think, is this still where we're at um, six, seven years later? I, I think a lot of it's still, you know, it's, it's fairly, um, you know, in sync with uh, the, the views I hear here in council and, um, you know, public, but, you know, there's, there's probably ways to improve upon it and, Certainly, an improvement would be to shorten it, <laughs> make it something you know you could read in ten seconds, not you know a minute. <laughs> so, so just so I'm clear, uh, 
Mr. Bennett, if you don't mind. Um, so you're suggesting that we might look at the, uh, the vision statement and uh, make recommendations. Is that what you're saying? Right, yeah, I think, um, you know, there's, this will be sort of the, um, the first thing you think about, but maybe the last thing you actually amend in your process or, or close to it. You know, you, you want to make sure um, that, if, you know, if, if the, um, the uh, public input you're, you're getting is telling you that, you know, this is way off base, then maybe it is something we spend some time with uh, updating to see if you, you know, engage the public more just by working on this. That's what this the, the last commission did. Was they, they spent a lot of time up front figuring out what the wording was going to be on this. They had a workshop on it and got people um, got people's um, input on, on it. And, and then they went ahead with the rest of the plan. But, you know, I think there's so many sort of incremental things you, you're doing related to this plan, probably, you're thinking about. You might want to come back afterwards and look at it and say, all right, so we know what we're adopting, or we have, you know, draft elements. Do those elements still reflect, or, or is, it, is this consistent with, with the, the policy changes we've made in each other? Um, you know, it's trying to touch on a lot of different things because the comp plan does, you know, it, it is really broad. Uh, it's, it is, that's why it's hard to narrow it down uh, to something more to see. Does that uh, answer your question, Commissioner Wayno? <laughs> it, it does, uh, in, in a certain degree. Uh, and we can have conversations about this as we get more into this. Um, I just think of a vision statement as something that, um, you know, the, the, the other question that we're asking is how much of this has been accomplished up to this point? Well, it, it, it's still in the future. So, uh, and it's going to be further in the future next time it's adopted. So, it'll be in 2044. Uh, you know, so I, I, you know, I don't think we have, we, you know, we're always, it, it's, it's a, what's, what's the word? Um, we're striving to get to this. It's an aspirational statement. Uh, we, we may not be there, but if something is accomplished in it, yeah, we should, we, we, we may want to just tweak it to say, we'll continue to be this, if that was something that's important. Um, but it, you're always sort of writing this as to what, you know, if, when this plan is fully implemented, if it ever happened, this is what Lake Forest Park would be like. Yeah, I, I guess what I'm saying though, is if we change it again, we're just moving out the, it, we're just moving out the vision again. Um, and then, you know, we never accomplish what we say that we were going to accomplish like 10 years ago. And granted, I know that that circumstances change, um, but the vision is supposed to be, from a strategic planning perspective, it, it, you know, your vision, either you're changing, it, you're either doing the process all over again, or you're, you know, you're scrapping your current vision, you're starting again, or you're, um, you know, you're adapting the vision that you have currently acknowledging that something has been created and, and, and acknowledging what hasn't been created or what hasn't been achieved and you know just being accountable for what is being accomplished and what hasn't been accomplished yeah i'm, I'm glad you mentioned the word strategic plan because um th there is a difference between a comprehensive plan and a strategic plan uh you know we're we're not um ever going to um decide that we failed because we didn't get to everything we're just continuing uh -huh updating this and trying to strive to, to 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 be the community to address all the things you're talking about and every you know 20 year period you're never getting to everything that's in the plan uh, uh -huh. and you'll see some of the things in the plan are out of your control you can't control what a utility district is going to do uh, you're just listing these are the other agencies that are, that are out there that have their own plans and we need to be uh you know working with them this is just in some ways you know it's it's um it's much more aspirational than a uh, strategic plan where like if we're not there in five years we need to just start over and replan uh, okay i think I okay want to, i want to get to melissa's comment david i also think that um in this particular case, this document serves as a guideline for all of our other work. It's a touchstone for us to go back to, to say, this document articulates where our values are and, and lie, as does the vision, uh, the legacy vision plan and um, 
when we had the big five. So it's th if you can think of it more as a touchstone or uh, like Steve said, an aspiration of where we'd like to be that we can reference back to justify the decisions we make as a group. Um, Melissa, you've had your hand up for a minute. Would you like to jump in? Uh, well, my question, I guess, is is it sort of segues, I guess, from David's comment. And uh, is there a tracking system for what we're accomplishing that the public can go to and look at just to see um, for like where we were when we first put together this comp plan and like where we are now? Is there, you know, just like a snapshot that the, you know, the people here in LFP could look at? No, there, there, there really isn't. I mean, this, this is. Um... This is the closest we come as uh, tracking. You know, you're you're evaluating whether we, you know, made these. Uh, most most comprehensive plan policies. Some some communities do say we will do this by you know certain such such and such a date, um, but you know that's never seemed to be a priority for uh, our community. Uh, we're we're just we're we're trying to show the rest of the region that we're um, either on board or we figured out a way we're going to you know meet the the parameters uh, the, of all the, the levels of legislation and, and policy guideline that, that are put out there in the region. And you're also trying to make sure it's clear what, you know, you, you know individually is important to your community. So um, we'll be able to check off some things as we go through this, but um, this, is not, this is a document you refer to when you're trying to figure out, you know, what, what is our policy from this? It's not necessarily a promise that we're gonna get this done. And I think that's uh, that's kind of getting at what uh, I was trying to explain about David. Like this is not a strategic yeah. plan; it's a it's a um, long range. To plan. keep us moving forward, I'm going to use a strategy we use in our own work, and that you're talking about kind of a community report card. That's a good idea. We're going to put it in our good idea parking lot, and we can pick that up if we would like to, as a group, talk about what that could look like and make a recommendation for that separate from this, if that's okay. I think we've, we spent a few minutes on it. I think everybody kind of around the table was nodding, like that would be actually cool if we did have a community report card. So maybe we'll just put that in our parking lot for now. Is that satisfactory to both of you? Sounds okay. good. All right, Steve, let's continue, please. Okay, let's uh, move on to the first page of the land use element, which is, Page 19. Um, I just wanted to um, highlight this because the, this just is a point of reference that this is the kind of thing where the volume two comes in handy. Um, a lot of the policy language that's in the land use element and the housing element uh, is, is based on um, the, the, these analyses that are talked about here. Uh, the growth targets, how we did our homework to make sure we had sufficient uh, capacity and um, uh, for, for that growth target. And just, uh, you know, some, some other um, details about the, uh, you know, existing land use, that kind of thing. So, uh, you know, and you can, you can get to the, the volume two um, on the, the same link that I sent you um, last week. So the land use element is, is really the, the, the primary element. So everything is kind of uh, plays off of it. Uh, if you're, you know, depending on what, uh, you know, these, these um, land use designations are essentially like zoning districts. They're, they have to essentially be equivalent to the zoning districts. Sometimes they can represent more than one district, like you see here as far as multifamily low. Um, but you're, you're um, you know, you don't, your plan is not growth management compliant unless your zoning and your land use districts match up. That's different in some states. Some states you're allowed to, to really have a future land use map, which is, you know, someday we want this to be whatever, um, you know, mixed use area. And right now it's industrial or something. But Washington state law is that, you know, you need to, to plan for whatever you say it is in your comp plan. Everything needs to be in place for it to happen. Um, right? And that includes facilities as well as the, the, the zoning regulations. Um, I always thought that was interesting about Washington State. So we used to call it future land use map. This is like, <laughs> there's nothing future about it. Present. Um, let's see. The, um, so on the next page, uh, you'll see how this is kind of. Um, 
carried out a policy right here at the policy LU 1.4, manage and maintain the city's official zoning map to ensure continued consistency with the comprehensive plan. So we're just signaling that, you know, we got it, state, we got it. <laughs> we're consistent with the GMA. Um, so any other, uh, that, that's kind of a very quick overview of the land you saw. Like I said, it's important. I don't know if you had any, anybody had any questions about that one. Now we can keep, keep moving. Um, so environmental quality um, is kind of a, an element that really is just picking up a lot of stuff that may not be um, addressed in other elements, but it's all related to uh, to environmental regulations. And uh, so you've seen reference there in that, that first page in the introduction, those plans that, um, that we've just been talking about uh, and other ones, the Shoreland Master Program and Community Forest Manager Plan, uh, Legacy and Wildlife Management Plan, which was, um, I think just adopted right, right before this, this plan was adopted. Um, and so, so you've, you're, you've got a lot of things going on here uh, in terms of just trying to be consistent with shoreline management, uh, which we have a whole, you know, uh, that's an interesting not animal as a document because it's, it is a plan that has policies and it has regulations in it. And it's just kind of a creation of the state. Uh, it's, it's a very top-down sort of planning. We all have to be, you know, kind of march in the same direction as far as how we're going to incrementally improve the quality of our shorelines. And so everything is designed to, you know, anytime there's um, development on the shoreline, you know, when you put it back, it needs to be better than it was before. So hopefully you know, down the line, you get to the point where our shoreline becomes more and more natural. It can always work out, but that's the basic idea. Um, so that, you know, it's not a lot of, I mean, it really is kind of reflecting back to what our what our regulations say. We're kind of looking backwards with this element, making sure, and also establishing some aspirational ideas about education of citizens and things, um, uh, and some things that are kind of out of our control, like um, uh, air quality and uh, some things that are light pollution. City can definitely do things about that, uh, and so it, you know it covers a lot of ground. Can can I ask you can, can, yeah. Sure. So uh, one of the th uh, plans our city is embarking on and funding is, is because of federal and state mandates, we're in the process of developing a surface water master plan um, to deal with, you know, runoff and issues like that. Um, and so right now that that process is just starting off, but part of the budgeting has been to plan that. It's, it's an unfunded mandate, another one. Um, that we're trying to uh, uh, do our best um, to implement. So we do have a consultant working with us and they've identified likely surface runoff sources and so forth. So we're going to have to have an inspection and enforcement program as part of that also, which is mandated. So I just wanted to flag that because it is actually an aspect of environmental quality. And I think there's more focus on, uh, per, you know, impervious and pervious surfaces these days than there was when this plan was put together. So that element will probably come in here. And that plan will probably hook in here in some way. I can't, I don't know exactly how, but just wanted to flag. What's the timeline for that? You know, Steve? It's it's weird because um, last time I heard it was, we were supposed to have something in our conference of plan to be compliant with this stormwater permit by 2023. But I think, you know, all communities, they don't want to do their conference plan twice. Uh, so I think there's a little bit of pushback. The state sort of uh, manages the federal compliance. So um, probably at around the same time that we um, adopt this conference plan, there'll, there'll be some package of policies that can be folded in. I would agree this is a good yeah, thing to put Yeah, I just wanted to flag that. So. We have one person basically dedicated to this. That's how small our staff is, um, plus supporting consultants. So we are, we are, and he has other jobs too. <laughs> so 
I also wanted to point out that the, that the these plans that are referenced in here are on our website. If you haven't looked at them, those are things that you can just reference. Um, you know, just looking for background for this section. I can read a dumb way. We moved off of this in 2015. So we're redoing it. Is that a state law that we have to do yes. it? Yeah. It's a state right. law that we have to redo it every nine to ten years. That yeah, it's, it's fluctuated. It used to be seven or seven years, but uh, they finally Eight. listened to common sense. Like ten years is good because the Senate census comes out every ten years. And let's do it like four or five years out. Uh, so it's state. It's not like wait for the park to redo it. Is no. We have to update it. We don't need to redo it. Right. It's just we have to update. We have to provide an updated. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's a periodic required of how we done or not it is. It doesn't matter. We just have to yeah. sign off on. Yeah, you know, if, if absolutely nothing happened that you wanted to update, you could say, uh, you know, and you thought your plan was compliant with state law, you just write them a letter and say, we think it's compliant. Yeah, Thanks. yeah. That, was, you know, that was my question. Leave, leave it in their court. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. But I, but we already know that there's some yes. legislation out there that we need to address. It was, we'll it, look at the rest of it. State laws, okay. Um, okay, uh, any other questions or thoughts on environmental quality? Not um, up to, to housing. Um, this is, you know, the other really big, I mean, the, I, I think in terms of the amount of time spent on elements, housing and land use are the top. Uh, and and in, ter in terms of scrutiny as well, for what, you know, what's going on here. Uh, because this this plays into that whole idea of targets, and so this is not only do we have to have the same kind of targets that we have now, which is capacity for new growth. We don't have to make the growth happen; we just have the, the zoning capacity for it. Now we're going to have to figure out how to um, have the capacity to facilitate um, the um, the ability for affordable housing. So you know, do you know there'll be some a regional process to come up with a target for different income levels, uh, the way I understand it. And then we're gonna have to show that we have the zoning that, that would allow for that. So that may be um, you know, additional work in terms of what we allow in single family zones in terms of um, ADUs. It could be allowing you know, duplexes. These are all these are all these strategies where you could say, yes, we you know we did X, so we got X in our comp plan, and by 12 months from the comp plan adoption, we'll have, you know, we'll adopt those regulations. That, is, that topic is very much in flux right now. There's a lot of concern that um, mandates to actually implement affordable housing, um, especially since we have a 1% per year cumulative property tax cap, uh, which is also part of state legislation. Uh, is an impossible burden for cities that are uh, primarily property tax funded, like ours. Um, like the 1% uh, property tax increase that we're allowed this year is $33,000. So we will get $33,000 more in property tax. And most of your uh, levy rates will go down as a result because of the new construction, right? Because it's a it's an umbrella amount that we can't add more than 1% to. So uh, it's complicated, but uh, so I think that's controversial. On the other hand, uh, this is the third year that there's a run at making single family housing uh, required to be more dense, in other words, abolishing it. And, uh, but not in my per personal view, no affordability to you. the arguments affordability. Right. But, uh, you know, my, um, I'll just use this anecdote. My daughter lives in an apartment in Green Lake. There was a little house that sold for like $850,000 uh, on the corner next to her. Now there are four giant townhouses selling for $1.1 million uh, next to her, you know. And we see that in Shoreline. That's, that's yeah. the issue. The, every every yeah. one of our neighboring cities that has removed a small home. Right. Has replaced it with very expensive apartments and very expensive right. uh, for purchase. So I'll just I think say, that, I think you're right. That's I don't want to lose sight of that. There yes. aren't any teeth, and we don't have any neighbors who are achieving, right, uh, or making progress with. So the question is, if there is state legislation that passes this time, because Governor Inslee has been supporting this, and the latest version I heard, though it can 
change completely is every single family lot of a certain size can have a triplex, right? So there's different versions of this that float around. But but I think that there could be some local zoning allowed for environmental protection, for energy efficiency, for uh, teeth, for affordability, that would be good. We did adopt in our city for the first time when the town center code was adopted, provisions that provide tax incentives for affordable housing and also requirements that if there's multifamily housing, I think over five units, I forget what the threshold was, you have to have some affordable housing in there. Um, and we do have the King County Housing Authority project, which I always mention to people, Woodland North Apartments on um, Bonco Way. But that doesn't address the and need. That doesn't address, well, we I think that address it doesn't address the, the regional need. need. Yes, I un I understand. So I actually think the ADU work is some of the most significant work we've done on affordability. So, but we're going to be mandated. We don't know what the rules are are going to be. Sure. And Steve is right. This is going to be. There is a push to actually make implementation of affordable affordable housing a mandate and track that. But I. I think there's been a lot of concern. Well, how does that work? We don't get the same for climate change. Honestly, if climate change action is mandated and there's no funding that comes with it right now, there is no funding that comes with it um, from the state or the county. So, you know, how does that work? So you'll be in the middle of all these cool, hot topics. Is it fair to say that typically when there's no funding, that it's a, a strongly recommended but not mandated? Not, not all oh, no, it's, it's, it's not. I mean, it, it, it's, it's mandated that you, the way these things work is you, you're not standing in the way of this happening. Like, if we decided uh, back in 19 or, or, or 2005 that, that you know, we were, we were, we're never going to have anything less than half acre zoning, um, you know, there was a similar sort of uh, you know, anxiety about the idea that you had to allow that you couldn't have a, a, a zoning over a quarter acre per lot, uh, and and there were you know people sued because they they did decide we're not going to have a uh, smaller zoning in a half acre. That's just the way that's who we are. Um, but you know, if if you just create what the, what we did is we said, look, we have all these critical areas. Some lots are over. You know, some zones are still going to be over a quarter acre as far as their their uh, minimum lot size, but it's because they have all of this, uh, you know, uh, these creeks and and slopes and all that, and so we managed to make a case that way. So that's what's going to happen here. I mean, I can assure you that that uh, city planners all over the region are pushing back just as hard as council and authorities talking about. They're like saying, you know, we we. We can't make this happen. We can't make a you know developer put all affordable units in their development. And our regulations say you have to do twenty percent, and that's 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 probably more. You know we, we could be you know choking off development just by having that requirement. So those, those kind of things, it's all going to shake itself out. Yeah, and we're going to come up with something that we can live with, uh, and uh, you know it's a, it's really just like you know, just staying tuned in to to how cities are addressing this and not getting in the way. More so than anybody else is getting into the bad. You don't want to be the, the low hanging fruit when it comes to you know being egregiously out of line because somebody, not the state, the state's not going to take you to the hearings board. It's just somebody you know like FutureWise or uh, uh, an advocate for affordable housing, and they will make you change your plan. So it's a key to keep your ear to the ground, understand kind of what's passing, what's you know way out there. Can I ask a question on that? So, you know, when we developed our town center ordinance, one of the questions was uh, whatever we changed could be appealed, uh, but what we didn't change, the deadline had already passed. Mm -hmm. So is that true of the comprehensive plan or is it, you know, appealable as a whole? Well, as soon as, yeah, as, soon as you break into a document that you, you could yeah. pass with one motion, yeah. Yeah, the whole thing is subject to... Okay. That's what I was guessing, but I I wasn't sure. I, I think you know your 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 land use code can be separated from your the right of way code. Right. You can't appeal the right of way code for somebody changing. Right. Got it. Okay. Thank you.
Before we move on from this, does anybody, uh, Melissa or David, I can't see you, so I just want to make sure you're not trying to jump in. You're good. Do you have something, Walter? Did it look like you're going to see Probably biting my tongue occasionally. Okay, <laughs> kind of that. Well, I think yeah. there are tension points, right? And I think we'll we'll uncover those as we as we move through. I, I was listening to your conversation last time about um, requirements for certain infrastructure to be in place, and I know we've heard that somehow our and I'm probably going to get this wrong, but like our our ability to handle. Um, what is it, sewage, but, or water, uh, surf, surf, no, it was, it had to do with our capacity. We talked about this with town center that we need upgrades to some of our- Fire, fire, fire. Yeah, or something uh, relative to that. And so I think all of these things are gonna kind of intersect. Like if we do this, what are our other obligations? You mentioned that the last meeting open space was an issue for us. Mm -hmm. You know, how do these all sort of relate to one another? I mean, it's kind of a fun thing for us to work on, right? To unpack those and figure out, um, you know, where improvements are necessary to achieve other things like having, you know, more affordability or... What's your thought there? No, I, I think, you know, I was just thinking in order to kind of help the process along, um, would it make sense to discuss the scope of work that I think you guys are, I mean, I. I it sounds like you already have a sense of what needs to kind of be addressed. Uh, can we, yeah, yeah, well, would you mean like you finished speaking? <laughs> well, you know, I, I just want to make sure that um, you guys have familiarity and, and have some basis for like, you know, reacting. To, I mean, to me, the hardest thing, uh, it's not a document like this this long, it's just, it's just finding a way in where it me has meaning to do. And so I'm hoping that, you know, that just going through this and, you know, you need to know, you know, where it might be out of date, I think, to get started on this. And, and then the scope of work comes in when we have a better handle on those new pieces. And because this, you know, we're going to get some input from a consultant on what needs to be updated in this, but it, the consultant really is going to be focused on that housing needs assessment and then, um, you know, incorporating anything else related to, to state law. Um, but you know, you guys really are the ones that as you're getting public input, you need to have some familiarity with this document and know like, you know, well, this sounds like it's really, you know, what I'm hearing is really making that section sound out of date. We really need to address that. Um, or or maybe there's something, you know, there's an equity issue here that you know we were just kind of blind to uh, seven years ago that that you know is all of a sudden just looks like wow, this pops out at you. Um, it's just really easy not to look at every page. Sure. Steve, is there a budget for consultant services for the public engagement part of this in your um, future budget? There, there will be, uh, but we just uh, not quite far enough along. You know exactly what that's. Yeah, I understand. I just wanted to make sure that. It is that the granting um, opportunities with the Washington State Department of Commerce? Is that what'll come? Yes, that's one of the things. Yeah, we, we we're going to get a uh, non-competitive 120,000 to work on the comp. Um, and so- Because uh, of our city size, right? Because of our city size, yeah. yeah. But, uh, you know, I would say that, you know, you know this, this type of project is more getting up into a $180,000 project. So it's not gonna cover everything. And it really depends on how much of uh, that um, public engagement you wanna do. If you wanna do surveys, and, like we talked about some of those could be done, you know, um, um, by, our, you know, by staff and, and, and commissioners. So do you have an idea of when, time-wise, that conversation about uh, about public engagement, scope and support was occurred? That's our first to do, is, okay. is to all agree on what the scope is. No, no, on the, on the time, I, did, I meant more, when my the conversation about figuring out the mode and support for public engagement when is that like four months from now? Is that eight months from now? I'm, I'm I think gonna... it's, it's like you know one or two, three months from now. Okay, because okay. you know the when we when we hire a consultant, we want them to be working on public engagement and the updating of yeah. actual language. And it's it's one process as I see it. Uh, from I'm asking because I want to make sure I inform the council. 
uh, oh, well, you know, because that's going to be a, a you know an area of interest. The, the council is not only going to have to prove the scope; you're going to have to prove the contract with the uh, consultant. Right. So you're you're going to be you know before the planning commission really dives in, you're going to know exactly yeah. what they're. Um, it's not to. really even on the council radar right at this moment. That's why. Which, which is okay. Yeah, it's it's good. You've okay, got a lot on your you. plate, right? I know. Okay, good. Thank yeah. you. I'm yeah. sorry to occupy your time here. No problem. So, um, can we move on to economic development? There is no objection. Um, th this is, you know, this is the, the place where the town center probably is mentioned more uh, than anywhere else, uh, and and so that's that's going to be an area you probably want to see, think about. You know, does it still make sense to have an economic development element, or, or is there some other way to approach this um, that that is more in tune with the, the policies related to you know change in the community and, and creating you know uh, stimulating uh, the kinds of growth that the community is comfortable with, or or is it still addressing uh, points that uh, you know, you think are important? But that uh, it's kind of. The Compline's always had an economic development element, but um, it's, it's not something that uh, I think has been a heavy priority, uh, but maybe, maybe it will be. Um, and this is another kind of um, element that I, I think it's, it's, it's very aspirational in terms of what, you know, as a community our size can do in the, um, the realm of public um, community service and um, public safety, but they, you know, it, it was trying to, you know, kind of pull together and, uh, in addition to create some policy language, uh, also kind of educate you on what's out there, who we're trying to coordinate with, um, you know, and uh, essentially, you know, we, we have some programs that are all kind of spinning off of our police, our public safety department, but that's, that's really, um, you know, our main, um, um, toolbox in terms of uh, as well as senior centers and that kind of thing, but which are you know run by other entities. Capital facility is another uh, important one. You know, you're, you're always looking back at what are we promising to do in the way of housing uh, and development, uh, good land use, and do we uh, are the facilities in place? Um, when the development is planned to happen. But the you know, first line is, is really the key to the capital facility development. The right facilities are in the right place to support development. Um, it's planned in the land use zone. So that means, you know, in, in communities that are on the outskirts of the region, uh, you, you're not supposed to, you know, approve a subdivision out there that you, you haven't put in enough uh, lanes to allow for the fuel traffic flow. Or, so they don't have water and sewer on it. Um, you know, I grew up in Florida where you would see just uh, skeletons of subdivisions all over the place. So this roads, to no, no houses. And, and, so, and that's where growth management really started in Florida. There was just too much of that. You know? So that's what you have to start having to have a um, And so, you know, it's, it's uh, also addressing what, what the, um, Facilities are of other other agencies, or what the plans are for other agencies. We can't sit the uh, Lake Forest Park is not a full service city, so the county and other agencies provide rest, uh, fire, rescue, schools. We do we do our own sewer. Um, we do a lot of transportation, and so we have a transportation water. Um, it's actually provided by other entities, but you know, within the but um, they're not uh, controlled by the city government. And um, so that brings us to parks, and we, you know we're going to have a lot of work to do in parks because we do have this uh, project plan, and we also have another park that was even contemplated, and the post plan was adopted. So that that will probably we may have some you know park before the horse issues with maybe updating the, the post plan, and you know and at the last minute incorporate something in the. In the comp plan to address the new first plan. We'll see how that shakes out. So there will be a um, new master plan for the park, which is the updated first plan 
and it would be probably a little more focused in um, rather than a menu. Uh, actually, be a little bit more focused in on what the next steps are for park improvements and so forth. And then there'll be a integrated master plan for the waterfront park, right? So, which is starting from scratch. And we'll have to have a lot of different elements, including things like security and parking and so forth like that. So, uh, so there's an umbrella of the overall master plan and then a master plan for the lakefront park. So they're, they're going to be busy, the parks board, because they have two basically uh, public engagement and uh, two, two kind of missions. Um, I don't think we have a timeline for that yet. No, I the third one. Uh, so there's two other questions on parks. Uh, moving on to utilities. Uh, this, you know, like I said, we do our own sewer. That's about it. So once again, we're just kind of listing what's going on out there, like where we're getting our all of our services, and we want you know need to you know cooperatively work and planning with these other entities. Um, uh, so, not one of the more important elements, but we want to make sure um, that we're you know that we not miss anything in terms of uh, uh, updating policies that are out of date. And then transportation is one of the big ones. Some 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 of these are mandatory elements, and others are are uh, optional. Uh, the transportation is one of those mandatory elements. Uh, it, it deals with um, level of service, just like uh, capital facilities. If the facilities are in place at the time of development, um, or that new development doesn't lower the level of service, so that uh, which you know is is it's it's a little too idealistic for a situation we're in, where we're a built out community. We've got facilities that are hard to expand. Like 522, you know, and, and um, so you're um, you're you're really just kind of justifying that um, we're going to be happy with this level of service, this amount of you know slow traffic, because we can't really do a whole lot about it, except you know increase transit, uh, and give people alternatives to uh, cars. So we are looking to reduce speed. On um, uh, and so the areas that we can control, we're looking at reductions um, not below 25 miles per hour. Uh, 20 is really slow. Um, and then, uh, you know, for some of the penny arterials, we're looking at, you know, what that would be. And can we work with DOT to reduce speed limits on not by 22? Where everyone goes at least. When you're saying you're looking at speed limits, most of the speed limits through the neighborhoods, even on arterial like 178, they're already 25 or so which yeah, so where, where, where they are, where they are higher. We're looking at uh and it will probably be a pilot program because we're using new uh techniques. Um I think the other question is what can we do for traffic calming when we are going to see and we are seeing increasing cut through traffic. And then, you know, there was some discussion about can you can you make some roads one lane? And then the question was, well, what about unforeseen consequences? Like if you made Perkins Way one, one way, uh, you know, what would happen to 178, right? So uh it's it's an active conversation in the council because we do want to make the city more pedestrian friendly and safer for walkers um, and because we we don't and we don't want our street improvement projects to be just about how do we improve streets for cars so there is i think a sense of the council along those lines but exactly what we can do and afford to do is limited but i do think over a period of years we'll try to get the speed limit reduced on 522 so it's commensurate with lake city way Oh, um, 197 yeah. is part of our main drag. That's a 30. 30. Okay. Calling it a drag's appropriate. I know. <laughs> People are going, they, 
Gail's the one that got those electronic heat signs up there, but cost people 40, 45 miles an hour up in Anna Hill, and everybody's walking their dogs up That's there. True. They're just waiting for somebody to get killed. The little kids so are waiting. Effectively, yeah. areas that are 25 trying to get yeah. more areas. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. and using other things like the flashing lights and so forth, because we can't, we don't have enough police coverage to right. yeah. cover all those places. Oh, so, but we can put more traffic cameras near to parks. That's a new state law that we got. So we haven't done that. Uh, but, you know, it it does effectively slow traffic when you yeah. have traffic cameras. You might get people being in parts of their front yard as parks in the city. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I just need to go down on 197th. Well, let's get back to this. Um, <laughs> where, where, what, what's next? That's so we've good. gotten to the end of this document and what what is next for conversation? Um. You know, I, I think uh, we need to do some more work to get you a um, better idea of the scope of things that we know we need to do get, get you that more detail. And so that's kind of what I hope would um, be part of the next meeting, but also um, talk to at least one former commissioner. Um, that I'm not sure if it was actually part of the meeting or not, but there was a, um, a thought that we should invite some um, previous commissioners speak to you about their experience in the conference of plan update. And so Richard Saunders may to come to the December 13th meeting. And maybe, and maybe John Lebo would come to this part of that too. I'll ask. Joel. Yeah. Um, I'm curious on the funding side of things, just being mindful of what you said up front about the budget and it being pretty challenged. And then Steve, what you just said about the fact that the available grant through the commerce through commerce is it going to be sufficient? Is council uh, earmarking in the budget money to close the gap um, so that we have a better understanding of you know exactly how much support we would receive from the consultant versus how much we would get? It's in his book. <laughs> um, he has a little. He has a little. I usually get a hey. That's not so you've already said yeah. that sort of what the delta is going to be, and, and you yeah. feel like we'll have the money. For yeah. it. You know, it depends, right? When the contract comes forward, the council will have to discuss it. It's a, it's a frugal time, unless totally. I was just thinking, yes, yeah. the burden is on us to a degree. To, you know, uh, like he has inter Steve has oh got God. abilities. Part of your discussion last time. Well, I. I Still, I'm holding off for maybe contacting the local bars, you know, local ones. Yeah, yeah. Uh, just think, you know, we're. I just think it would be helpful to know more about that, so that as we're generating ideas for what are some things that we can do in terms of engaging the public, you know, or the community, versus what would we be leaning on, you know, a consultant to lead workshops or whatever. So that that's all I was looking for is because I think that will um, impact, you know, some of our decision making on that, whether we're at farmers markets with footboards or you know what yeah. the I, I think council would start with the grant. Yeah, <laughs> well, that's great. But Steve, I think, has flexibility in his budget and has been at his good. Yeah. Just in terms of gathering information, it feels like that's something to to start with. Um, I Matthew, I, I just yeah. want to say that the the survey that you came up with and the way you interact, like it was just this online platform. I feel like there's just the potential to interact with I mean, mom, the PTA moms. I mean, these it's already a lot electronically created in these, um, these, these platforms. It seems, it seems like such a shame to not um, do that. But I don't know, you know, what the formal format would be so that we stay, you know, copacetic with you know, city regulations, if any, or you know, how that's. I mean, I, I mean, I would love to know. Uh, I mean, could it be a clipboard? <laughs> I mean, which is labor intensive, but using some of these online platforms is um, very new. I yeah, think that's what I, 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 know, I just have to really formulate questions carefully so that you get the feedback you're looking for. Um, and you know, that's that's one of the reasons to have a consultant that is experienced in public engagement on conferences plans because it's just a little bit you know distinct. Um, right. Uh, an accessory dwelling unit, or it's, or it's just like, what's your experience been like? Like, in what, where do you want to be in 20 years in this community? And you know, what are the things you think are most important? 
the people who have lists what are the highest priorities. For it. So, so yeah, you know, the questions are going to be a little bit different, but there's no reason you can't do the survey monthly, whatever, and start getting feedback. We, the only, and the only reason we did that for the ADU is because there was no money for a consultant. We were being asked to to work on the code with, in the absence of any, you know, any, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So but I think it would be so helpful to get us some form to just hold it with because this is such a broad, yeah. you know, uh, issue. And at least we get some, something to sink our teeth into. Yeah. But anyway, uh, timing on a consultant, uh, what what is, I think you talked about that. Uh, at the end of the first quarter, next year. Next okay. year, we should probably have be close to selection. So maybe that's something we can all think about. Are there, you know, is, is there anything that we can do between now and the end of March to uh, inform ourselves more about, like, what are some of the questions that we have relative to our comp plan, or what, you know, what is it that, you know, we think we might want to know just for our own education in order to be able to chew on these items um, together. Uh, also, in terms of identifying the parts that you know need to change, I ran across on Commerce's site a periodic update checklist for fully planning cities, um, and it was a. Uh, are you familiar with this document? I, it was really nice because it had hot links actually to legislation that's changed, and I, I wonder as we you know leave our meeting tonight and and prep for next time, what is it that. Uh, would be the most useful thing for us to do to be primed for the next step, you know, in this process, like, like identifying the scope or, you know, where to start. I'm thinking from a planning standpoint, how do we start to arrange our meetings and, you know, what, how, how do we basically, you know, carve this up and tackle it? Well, I mean, I, I find that checklist overwhelming. I can imagine how you might. You know, you look at it. Um, I want to have the consultant on board and say, you know, you're the expert. You've got the chance. Sure. Um, but so you, that you're, you're. Well, I'm happy to send it to you if you want to dive into it. Oh, I have it right here. I just I'm wondered if that. I mean, if oh, you wait, want to sure. See if the rest of the commission would like to receive it. Um, I, I could do that. I'd like to hear from all of us. They want to get into that level of detail. I think, um, you know, the, the there are some other documents that we have talked about uh and just going through what's what's in the comp what the comp plan refers to so i think that would be the first step you know, what do you you know look at look at the safe streets you know, safe highways pros plan uh legacy plan as uh councilman Bodie was saying um and that would be a really good first step just so so you're you know indoctrinated into kind of where the thinking runs this community over the last you know, 15 years or so uh, and and then um, you know, let I think if you get too caught up in what we need to do, you're gonna, we're going to spend way too much time on something that's probably going to change by the time we actually get to uh, recommended policy direction because it is really a moving target. So it sounds like what you're saying is the best place to spend time is not worrying about the scope at this point, but uh, really going to and becoming very familiar with the documents that were part of the first section yeah. here that the, the legs the, in, the informant the safe streets safe highways just get re-familiarized with all of those key documents you listed at the beginning for yeah they're, they're on the big okay. five website I'll, right. I'll confirm that we've got a copy of, but yeah it's really those ones that have been adopted since okay um, and so so uh, especially related to streets and highways uh, and sure. streets and town center uh, you know, i think um what about well just uh two of you we're actually, yeah, two of you were doing it around the, we did the town center. So, so yeah, the town center uh, is is a, a big piece of where our policy has changed in terms of the most, the biggest piece in terms of land use. And land use is where this plan starts. It's what is our land use uh, you know, policy framework. So um, that, that would be a big part of it. And then, you know, um, I'll, I'll try to get you something on the on the creeks. And that's, uh, that's that's got a big part of what you know, that's the one of the mayor's main emphasis. He wants to see you know get, get a lot of that done during his, his uh, tenure as mayor. So um, so the big five is probably the main thing to spend your time working. Okay, great. So everybody needs some moment to read over that. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, can I, the thing I, 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 when I read this document, me personally, I, I can really identify with 
kind of the spirit of what it's saying. And, and so my feeling is that I don't feel that it needs to be tremendously modified. I really like it, but I, I do think that we need to update it so that it is in core, you know, it, it just reflects where we're at because we've had, we have had a lot of change. Like, and that's kind of how I see, um, you know, one way that we could really, uh, you know, the length of the because that's what I'm up there. <laughs> Yeah, I think I mean I think that's what you're saying, Steve, right? Is that is that if we're familiar with our current comp plan and and we are refamiliarized with key documents in our city, we're going to be well primed then to look at the things as like a phase one, the things that absolutely need to be updated based on new. Yeah, that's okay. absolutely current. So that's all right. I, I mean that's doable. I mean, I don't think we necessarily I think Steve's kind of said it. We don't do this in order. Right. I think we pick what we already have worked on, town center, parks, we've worked on that. So I have it. So some of the stuff that we're familiar with. I think that's where we start and get our feet wet with those documents and then go to the stuff that we're not quite sure what it's from. It's the way right. that we work. So it sounds like then based on that, Ira, there's this sort of alignment with existing internal documents, and then there's alignment with required mandates. Right. But we don't know what the required mandates are because you're you're going to kind of do that life work to identify. Yeah. Okay, that, but what we could be working on is alignment between internal documents. Yeah, and you and um you could, uh, the next meeting you're thinking about, do you want to uh, appoint a liaison to start talking with the uh, Climate Action Committee? Just to, so, you know, somebody get a hand on where they're headed. You know, that, you know, that was you, how I feel for what's in the comprehensive plan. Do, you know, is, is it worthwhile now to, to um, be attending their meetings, you know, fairly regularly just to see, uh, you know, let them know that we're, you're interested as a community in what they're doing. That's a whole other aspect. And what are the other commissions up to? What's the park board up to that they're doing the post? You can send somebody to one of those meetings and just you know express interest in what they're doing, uh, and, and get that you know intercommittee thing going. Right. We could have our own <laughs> have a liaison to the liaison. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, well that sounds good. I mean, I I can definitely personally use these documents to sort of evaluate. You know at the current plan and if we can just do that if we can you know cross-reference these documents to our existing plan to see where you know questions come up that might be a good good way to become familiar so when we have to dig into the mandated changes we're you know, really well versed in the material okay great yeah remember this is a, this is a marathon it's not a sprint it's yeah just a pace yourself sure it's sure. a little while to, to really figure out what we need to do yeah Appreciate your, your attention. I know this is a, a little on deadly goal side, <laughs> but uh, at least I, I, you know, I feel like we need to do it. I'll thank you for putting up. Yeah. <laughs> well, and you and I can meet too to yeah. try to kind of lay out a roadmap for it so that we're, you know, that we kind of know where we're headed month to month. And, yeah. um, I think that's one of the things that was a lesson learned. Uh, Ira might agree with this. When we were doing the town center, we it felt a little bit more like a pinball machine because we kind of Balance. We didn't have a roadmap for how we were <laughs> reliving this trauma. Uh, and so maybe that's something you and I can work on is a roadmap for our group so we understand how we're you know taking this apart and that that might be helpful so we don't have that circular conversation. So really played this, I think, for a while. If I could um just jumping off of what Lois was saying, I think um that there's going to be bigger things um, associated with, say, housing affordability, climate action, and so forth. But then, in a way, consistency with the town center um, zoning and your ADU work, that's that to me is feels smaller scale. Mm -hmm. That's um, but but it's it's as important to express it properly, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, I just wanted to say, to me, I see big chunks. And then I see little uh, little chunks that uh, are are still very important because yeah. this is out of date with some of the things we've accomplished. But might be easier to to do those more 
almost more housekeeping. They're not really housekeeping because they are part of the values and vision of you know, policies. But anyway, I just I just uh, was listening to this and thinking there's big chunks and small it's chunks. It's almost like a warm up. It's a really contextualized way for us to get familiar with and working on the comp plan before we get into the heavier issues. For sure. Any other comments? Question? Melissa, David? Walter? No, just got a lot of reading. A lot of reading to do. A lot of post it notes. And... Hopefully, it's open for the test. I know, but I feel like when I thought about it, I would have brought everybody some really colorful little, like those page flags, like, <laughs> like Meredith has. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> are the at the town center and teach us all how to use them. Um, okay, well then I'm going to move us on to reports and announcements. Anything? Um, we are close to hopefully making an offer for a new city arborist. Okay. Uh, so I'm very excited about that. We can fully staff again at the department. I think, uh, what about Tanner's? Replacement. Uh, no, who was the Cameron? Cameron. Riley. Yeah. Riley started uh, about uh, a month ago. Okay. And, uh, yeah, I think um, he's, uh, he's been doing a couple of two board meetings now. So okay. He's uh, you know, fitting in really well. Welcome. And what's his name? Riley. Um, Riley Bushnell. Bushnell. Okay, cool. Yeah, well, hopefully we'll have a chance to meet him. Thank you. Uh, Okay, great. All right. What about uh, additional citizen comments? Do we have anyone else besides my husband here? No. <laughs> I happen to know he's probably not even listening. Um, all right. Agenda for next meeting. It sounds like maybe you'll start maybe helping us unpack some of the mandates that we'll. Yeah, and um, hearing from uh, previous planning uh, commissioners. And maybe um, the, missing middle, the missing middle group had postponed. Oh, right. Yeah. Yeah. This, and, and so they may be ready next month. We'll see. I met with them. Uh, they were the group that came forward. They're really interested in um, build, uh, uh, starting a, a housing, housing trust. trust yeah, organization that kind of at the beginning yeah, of that. Sense. And I met with them on Friday and we talked a little bit about, you know, where they were at and answered questions just about our work. And um, so they they may be ready in December. They may postpone. We'll see, depending on what their progress has been. And then um, the I don't know when that survey is closing. Have you guys all filled that out for the Climate Action um, Committee? If you haven't, go into your email. There was a link to it um and i think that you know it would might maybe be nice to hear from them again on what they found or um and i like your idea steve about maybe having you know us choose a committee that we could start following their meetings at least for a little while to kind of get it you know um, to firsthand knowledge about some of the like the parks committee and the climate committee um to inform our conversations here i thought that was a good idea um so be thinking about that okay i think that's it uh so last comments before i can, i'll take a motion then anybody want to offer a motion to adjourn yeah. second uh all those in favor say aye okay. aye all right thank you melissa it was great to see you david good to see you bye thanks for being bye. here Okay.